Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing another movie review this week. This time it's Dumbo. It's the latest live action remake from Disney. Since we've been getting so many remakes a lot lately, for the past couple years, as I mentioned. Um, so far this year, we're getting not only this film, but we also got Aladdin, which I just reviewed. It was a disappointment. The Lion King, which is coming out next week, it's already being criticized since they saw early screenings. Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, which is a sequel to Maleficent. You know, the first one was being a disappointment, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to the sequel after what they did. And even Lady and the Tramp is getting one. Yes, Lady and the Tramp, which I really love. The 1955 film, now being remade. But out of those remakes that we're getting, I mean, yes, we had some good ones, and then we got some bad ones. Um, I would say Dumbo is actually one of the better ones to come out this year. I mean, it couldn't be worse. But this one actually did have energy. It's very strong. However, it was criticized by critics. Well, as usual. It's complaining about uh, Tim Burton's direction of the film and you know, with the screenplay written by Aaron Kruger, even saying that it, it lacks the soul. It's lack the soul is lacking for the film and didn't live up to its potential, but I mean basically this is a, a reimagining of the 1941 magnificent masterpiece that's based on a book by uh, Helen Alberson and Harold Pearl. You know, the story about a young elephant who's semi anthropomorphic, who has giant ears, and actually has the ability to fly. Well, with the help of Timothy or Mouse, but also joins in with the crows and and all that. But it was adopted by a circus elephant named this is Jumbo. Yeah, his mother, which he actually named him Jumbo Junior, but they reacquired him and called him Dumbo because fact that he's a lot different from everyone else yeah. yeah with these gossip girls and you got um, a ringleader you got a lot of animals around and you know, circus um, artists out there you know like the trapeze artists and the giants and the clowns uh, everyone else you know they're you know they, they go from from location to location in Florida just so they can have a night at the circus for everyone to join in and watch the show. Yeah. So when Burton decided to, to take over for this one, I mean, I the difference here was that he wanted to have a he wanted to stay true to the source material, but only to come up with a different storyline. You know, trying to become more of a tribute to it. So. So now he throws in some characters that are definitely bringing their performance to life. Like you got Danny DeVito you know, playing the ringleader. You got Michael Keaton playing the uh, playing the amusement park owner and the entrepreneur, the one who wanted to bring him to life through his park. Um, Colin Farrell playing a, a World War I veteran, but he's also a former circus um, Extreon performer. He does all these horseback riding from the Kentucky. Um, he actually had a wife who passed away. Plus, um, he had uh, two children, uh, Millie and Joe. You know, they're all played by uh, Nico Parker and Finley Hobbins. Even got uh, Eva Green and who's playing a, a very sassy uh, 
French trapeze artist and also um, and also um, Van Burr's uh, Muse and you also got the investor played by Alan Arkin so there you go <laughs> so it's an interesting cast here it might have flaws in the film I understand I can live with that but for what it is I enjoyed it so, let's start with the review stars Colin Farrell Nico Parker Finley Hobbins, Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, Eva Green, yeah, from uh, Casino Royale, uh, among others, yeah, Alan Arkin, with Sean Seth, the Opia, Alperi, Joseph Gatz, Sharon Rooney, Michael Buffer, yes, Michael Buffer. You know, he's been known for actually saying, Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Whenever uh, they had the boxing match. Yeah, so he's, he's the... Uh, so he's the one that's doing the call. Uh, Frank uh, Burke. Ed and Ed and Joe Osmond. It's written by Aaron Kruger. It's the same screenwriter who has done several films like uh, Enemy of the States, Arlington Road, among others. Uh, once again, based on the book by Helen Aberson and Harold Pearl, which is also based on the 1991 classic by Alto Eglander, Joe Grant, and Dick Hummer. And it's directed by Tim Burton. The movie began set in 1919. We meet circus owner and ring leader uh, Max uh, Medici, who's played by Danny DeVito, who runs the Medici Brothers Circus. Yeah, he joins them with his brother, but unfortunately, he's the only one. Yeah, it never explains what happened to his brother. But then, um, a former Extreon performer and World War I amputee Holtz Ferrier, who's played by Colin Farrell, returns after the war, which he lost his arm. He goes back to the circus, which is being run with financial problems. And Medici decided to force to sell the circus horses after Holtz's wife and co-performer Annie had passed away due to a Spanish uh, flu outbreak. That was happening. So, Medici reassigns Holt as a caretaker to the circus uh, pregnant uh, Asian elephant named Mrs. Jumbo. Yeah, or Jumbo simply. Which she gave birth to a calf, which is an elephant, with uh, big, large ears. Which was named Jumbo Jr. So, anyway, Medici had ordered Holtz to actually hide the ears, so that way in his debut performance, uh, they don't want the audience to see until it's revealed. But by the time um, he started uh, the performance, Things got completely worse when the crowd started to mock him, calling him Dumbo, yeah, while pelting him with peanuts and other stuff. And that's when Mrs. Jumbo got so horrified that he decided to crush the entire uh, circus, you know, going after the entire crowd. Got totally furious and attacks everyone until she was being lock up inside the cage you know, all handcuffed with um, ball and chain send her into the the cage that's, that has signs that says caution mad elephants 
just like what happened in, in the 1941 film. So yeah, she, she actually caused a lot of extensive damage, even accidentally killing the abusive handler during the tour in Joplin, Mississippi. Yeah. Which actually he deserved it too, because you know, he, he was a complete asshole. The way he was treating these animals. But afterwards, trying to prevent this from happening again, Medici resorts to selling Mrs. Jumble to someone else. But, but meanwhile, Holt, Holtz's uh, son and daughter, um, Joe and, and Millie Ferrier, you know, they're both played by Nico Parker and Finley Hobbins, they decided to cheer uh, Dumble up by actually uh, teaching him how to fly. Because, after all, he has... Uh, big flappy ears that he can flap around and be able to to imagine himself going up in the air and soaring around by using a magic fetter or what seems to be but that's just part of the, the gag here <laughs> the kids themselves have discovered that the fetters are the key for, for Dumble to fly by flapping his ears this was going to be become the new performance for for Dumbo when he prepares for it. So, in his second performance, uh, he plays the role of a fighter fighter clown in order for him to put out the fire. And you know, joining in with the rest of the clowns, I mean, even Holtz uh, took over too while he was wearing a uh, a prosthetic uh, arm and you know, with a hand included. So he is about to actually uh, use his nose to to grab all the water and be able to spray all around the, the entire uh, apartment, you know, already catching on fire. Yeah, for his trunk. But um, unfortunately, the performance gone completely wrong. He was trapped on the high platform, surrounded by flames. But Millie decided to deliver the fetter in order for him to fly, which he does. And the audience was totally astounded by his ability. So, yes, I mean, he gets to uh, take the water, you know, as he take out all the flames and even started to uh, take the water and also spray onto the uh, <laughs> uh, half of those crowds right there. And yeah, they all got sprayed with water. <laughs> And, man, they were just amazed. But that is until we meet uh, the entrepreneur, who's also the owner of uh, an amusement park called Dreamland in New York City, named B.A. Vanderveer, who's played by Michael Keaton, who uh, approaches uh, Medici to a collaboration, so he had to sign a contract to see if if they could take um, his entire circus to to join in with uh, Dreamland, so now they can have their own home to work with. Now Medici can become his partner, and they'll actually perform at his uh, amusement park. But we also learned that Vanderveer had the man Dumble to fly with a French trapeze artist named. Colette Marchant, who's played by Eva Green. So Colette and Dumbo's uh, debut performance at Dreamland, because they were preparing for themselves to actually fly together. Yeah, meaning that you know she gets to um, hang on to the ring and be able to land directly to uh, Dumbo as they ride together. However. They decided to do the performance without a net. And that's what led to the biggest problem of them all was that Dumbo had nearly fell off of the high platform uh, with um, Khaled actually falling down, but Holt actually catches uh, Carlette. Yeah, because you know, she almost got killed. 
I mean, that's the problem, too. They, they're supposed to use the safety nets to keep them safe, you know, from falling and getting killed. But Dumbo somehow hears his mother calling in response and realizes that his mother is somewhere in the exhibit. Yep, it turned out to be the haunted house uh, exhibit at Dreamland where you see all these creatures, like you saw see the wolf, you saw the alligator, and all of that. So that's where she was hidden. You know, all dressed up. Um, with makeup looking completely scary. So now we know where Mrs. Jumbo was at the whole time. Which now becomes a distraction to, to Dumbo. So now, so now Bandavir decided to find a way to actually move um, Mrs. Jumbo somewhere else, or at this rate, terminate her. and also fired the rest of Medici's performers from Dreamland. So now they decided to form a plan to save Mrs. Jumbo from being terminated by actually coming up with a perfect plan to stop him and be able to save uh, both Dumbo and her so that way they could escape from Dreamland you know, before something goes completely wrong. I'm going to leave it that way. I would definitely say it is a spectacular um, retelling of the story even though it's not as magnificent as the original 1941 classic again based on the book but I could definitely see that Burton is trying to do his best to make this movie work so this is a whole different story. So if you think this was like how the 1941 achieves, well, you can be a little disappointed on that level. But otherwise, I, by comparison, I mean, this is, this is the best they could do. But anyway, I like the performances. Um, however, I would say... Uh, both um, Nico Parker and Finley Hobbins could do a bit better because I mean they sounded to sound a little um, I don't know kind of blandish a little bit I mean I'm sorry to say this but I just wanted to I know it's not perfect having to get uh, child actors who can perform their, their who can perform their roles very well but I know they're trying to do what's best for them because I just feel like they didn't have as much energy as they were hoping they would be, but, but that, that's in my opinion. But we also learned that uh, Millie wanted to become a scientist, so that's why she had her chemistry set uh, laying around, hoping she would one day discover that. Because I know when she went inside the, the wonders of science, I mean, this is where she wants to discover everything here. Uh, she wants to. She wants to study science. Yeah. Uh, while uh, Joe is just being a mostly enthusiastic uh, type, you know, just wants to trying to see if if um, if Dumbo can actually fly by using the magic fetter that both Millie and Joe found. Well, not really a magical fetter, they just use it to to see if this will work. And, and that's when the fetter starts to blow straight into uh, Dumbo's nostrils. Yeah. But it, it's cool to see uh, Dumbo fly. I mean, he soars around through the crowds of people. He flies around all the way up in the sky. And that sort of and also trying to save uh, Mrs. Jumbo because he sure misses her and so on. Um, so the, the special effects were, I'll say this, um, it was incredibly um, magical, solid. 
and um, it actually brings the character to life. I mean, even through the eyes of him. I mean, I, I love those point of view shots where it, it looked like fisheye lenses that you could see, where he tries to imagine having to look in the world you know, through his uh, blue eyes. I mean, even if he is afraid, but nevertheless, you know, he's he's believing himself of what he's doing. It was kind of nice to see Danny DeVito and Michael Keaton together in one film, considering that it's directed by Tim Burton, because they previously did uh, Batman Returns. Yet, yeah. you know, Michael Keaton was Bruce Wayne, aka Batman, and uh, Danny DeVito was the Penguin. Yeah. So I, I I like the fact that now you get to see them in different roles considering how older they really look now. Yeah. So the, the way I saw both of them. Of course, Keaton plays the villain in this movie. Who's the, uh, the entrepreneur the and, and the amusement park owner of Dreamland. And he was the one who wanted to uh, demand to, to keep uh, Dumbo uh, having his performance, but you know, things just seem to go completely wrong. Uh, Eva Green, uh, as beautiful and sassy and totally good-spirited as uh, as a French trapeze artist uh, named Carlette. Um, you could definitely see how beautiful she really was and she really cares so uh, for the elephant, not to mention her performance. Even though it was really hard to do, but in the end, when they did the next performance, that's when they they got to ride together in that scene where they're about to save uh, Mrs. Jumbo from being terminated. Uh, yeah, there's that's one thing. So I know the screenplay. Um, could have added much for the story, but I think they really did for what they could. And I, I appreciate for what Burton was trying to do, so I, I could see why he wanted to do this uh, project. Um, it was nice to see uh, Alan Arkin in the film playing the investor, Jay Griffin Remington. Uh, there's actually one scene that I had to admit was pretty funny, was that when, and yes, this is going to be the spoiler again. When Dreamland was already being in flames, all destroyed because uh, Van de Veer had, uh, was about to put the power back on, but the power surge was, uh, was all set off, so everything was going out of control, and it causes the entire uh, theme park to um, cause on fire. Yeah, it's all in flames, and I love how his his uh, expression of that saying, "Wow, what a disaster!" And then he he went to uh, Max saying, oh, "I'm gonna go get, come on, let's go get a hot dog." <laughs> yeah, my treat. <laughs> I thought that was just really funny. Um, also, nice to see uh, Michael Buffer. Uh, playing the remaster for Dreamland, yes, and this is where he does his famous uh, <laughs> uh, his famous stint. Like, yes, he even explains everything about, you know, you may see a house fly or you may see uh, a dragon fly, but have you ever seen an elephant fly? And yes, he even does the let's get ready for Dumbo. <laughs> Perfect. This one they're starting the performance. Um, so, in a way, I, I think it really worked, in, in my opinion. I mean, it's, again, they're both different movies <clears throat> in between. And I, I just think they really um, shows exactly the perfect message and the way things happen. I know it's, it's tough, but... What matters the most is though that 
the Dumbo is a very special elephant who has the ability to do this, even if they had to have someone else help him. Also, they'd be back with his mother, you know, Mrs. Jumbo, and so they'd be safe and they'd be together. Yeah. Oh, and I also forgot that, yes, that there's other uh, circus performers uh, joining in. You know, like you actually have a mermaid who's overweight, Miss Atlantis. Um, you got the uh, uh, premise uh, Singh as the snake charmer. Uh, Rongo the Strongo, yes, the strong man who's, who's a tall black man, but he can lift like huge pounds of weights. Yeah, he, you know, he could do anything. Uh, you got all the clowns, you got all the other um, performers, yeah, even the wild animals too, like lions, tigers, uh, gorillas, <laughs> all of that. All inside the, the train of the Medici's Brothers uh, Circus. So, wow. <laughs> anyway, also Colin Farrell was very good too. Um, as a halt of farrier. I mean, he really does care for the elephant and he really does what he can you know, to save the, the circus. And also cares for his kids too, even though you know he was gone for such a long time. But came back and hoping things will be for the better because you know, considering that he lost his arm during the war and he misses his wife. Uh, but it's worth watching, so um, I'll, that's all I could say. I mean, so that's Dumbo, and I give the movie uh, three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.